I'm a little nervous because uh, my 16 years of journey has to be summarized in three minutes. I'm just thinking how am I going to convey that message to all of you here with a diverse audience here. Now, uh, why I chose this particular area? Because uh, let me describe my son first. He's a child, uh, he's now a teenager who's 16 years old. And, uh, the physical descriptions of an uh, autism child would be extremely extraordinarily beautiful, handsome, beautiful, a calm child or a hyperactive child who doesn't sit. Um, they are very uh, happy in their own world and they are considered to be pure souls who are not connected to our world. So, I chose this topic because this has been something which I've been thinking for a long time. Communication and social skills is what I felt is most critical for a child to be inclusive in a society. Why is communication? These are basic questions. Um, why is communication important? Because as humans, we need to interact with each other, communicate and connect with each other. Uh, the second reason would be we have a set of rules in our society, so everyone has, are expected to behave in an appropriate way. The third would be that if you do all these things, you would be successful in your career and your life, in your relationships, family, friends. Now, uh, the next slide. So, uh, why, why, uh, why do children need to communicate effectively? Uh, it's to understand the language that the other person is saying and also to express what they feel about uh, the emotions or beliefs or intentions or desires, whatever it may be. The third would be to use all these skills in a very appropriate ways. Um, in a regular um, community, everyone's perspective about good and bad changes, right? For one person it may be good, the other person it may not be. So the perspective of each individual changes. Now, the language I feel is most important in the early years of a child. The language skills has a developmental stage. So children with autism are uh, skills include interactions, sharing their interest, and also creating uh, relationships. Uh, friends, family, people around them. Now, um, in terms of uh, what are the skills affected when a child is with autism? A developmental delay in various areas, language and communication, socialization, um, then problem solving. Problem solving in the sense it can be academic and also in uh, socializing, so resolving conflicts in a social situation, in a social relationship. So, and also physical development also gets affected with students with autism because uh, their fine motor and gross motor also gets affected. Although uh, the schooling, the early childhood, everything is, is, uh, is solitary. They don't have people to communicate, the relationship with uh, friends, especially friends. Children learn through friends. So they always are aloof, alone, because they are not supported enough to have a relationship. The, I would like to share a few stages of uh, social play. Uh, play is a very important part in the school life. Um, they, it starts from the world. So there are six stages which, uh, which I felt I should be sharing with you. From an infant, a newborn, who is like a, a, who plays on their self, then we have the next stage of play, uh, a solitary play. It happens around zero to two years, where the child just plays with themselves. There's no people around. The third one would be a parallel onlooker play or a spectator play, where the child just gazes at the other person, but doesn't really participate. And this happens around two to two and a half years. By two and a half to three, it's a parallel play where it just plays along with another child without any interaction. The uh, next day would be 
here. Um, associative play and that would be the way. They have similar interests, but there's no communication later. They will be sharing their interests. The last stage is around five, six. This is social play, where they interact and share their interests, share their toys, communicate. And they do a lot of interaction in terms of socialization. So this stage is achieved by five to six years. The child finds it difficult to uh, socialize with the other kid will be missing on these stages and they will not be learning how to socialize. Now, um, I would like to show you autism just to have an understanding how the uh, students with autism or a child with autism, how they understand. So you can watch the video at the end of the uh, session. Um, this, these are the red flags I would consider because uh, with many children what we have observed is uh, in the very early stages, by zero to two, there are a lot of things people can observe and it's an uh, indicator for us that the child is at risk. It would be like lining up toys and they would use a repetitive play. But it's a very inappropriate way of playing. The second one is poor speech development. By the age of two, the child needs to start developing the speech or language. Now, if there is very poor speech or delayed speech, that's an indicator. The third one would be not communicating with people around them or children. They would be prefer to be alone for hours together. And uh, you will also see emotions being played here because they are not able to express their emotions and feelings. They would cry, they would get frustrated uh, at different situations, which is very inappropriate. Also, lack of danger. They would not know the threat of a danger. They would be unaware of the words, the surrounding. Um, then we have also like uh, very strange attachments to objects. Any toy or any particular sense of smell, it depends on the senses or sensory of the child. And we also have a change in routine. When there is a structure routine, we are okay with that. But if there is a sudden change, you will see the child unable to cope up with that change. So these are the red flags. Um, it would be easier for uh, new parents to indicate the uh, early signs of autism. Next would be, uh, as I already, already mentioned, that these are developmental delays which you can observe in a child like language, speech. Now, when I say speech, uh, there are children with uh, delayed speech and no speech. Language development, there will be difficulties in the oral and also written. They will not also spoken language also would be tough for them to communicate. Social impairments like having relationships and communicating in a social scenario, in a school or in a, in a public public place would be very difficult. Then also emotion plays a very important part in the socialization. So that, those areas also get affected here. The physical development in the sense they have fine motor and gross motor, which helps them in physical activities and writing. This, uh, when it comes to speech, there's a, there's a little difference. Um, there is a variance. Autism is a spectrum, right? So uh, it comes under an umbrella of five disorders. Uh, autism is one, and then we have Asperger's syndrome, which is also called as high-functioning autism. Now, the, the difference between, uh, because you should not assume that a child with autism have, will have a speech or a related speech. These children with high functioning, they are highly linguistic. They, are, they have very good language ability, but they lack in socialization. They will not be able to communicate effectively on a social situations. So uh, those are called, uh, those children are called as, uh, with Asperger's and high functioning. And, uh, they have very high IQ, above average. They're usually gifted. Talented in one particular field, that's called a seven skills. It can be a musical field or an artistic, or it can be linguistic, or 
or it can be many more areas which I have not explored. So uh, you should not, the reason why I mentioned Asperger's is because when you see as a, as a kid with Asperger's, they will be very good with communications. So you will only wonder why is this child not behaving socially appropriate. They will have a very high language, written language. I have seen a kid in my own experience who is very gifted, he is a very quick learner, he solves problems in seconds and uh, has good vocabulary words which even we will find it tough to use. So this is, this is a high level functioning of autism. You must be aware that language is a problem and it's true with our children with autism will find language is very difficult to use it. It's not they cannot, it's because it's very difficult to speak in relation to um, in a social situation. As a parent, um, my experience here would add my child would not, he's a verbal child. When you say verbal, it doesn't mean we communicate, we can talk. He doesn't initiate a conversation. There is no need for this conversation. Only for his needs he will communicate. Basic needs like water, food, or his own interest. Apart from this, there are no areas I found that he communicated. So it's it's very difficult to train him to speak a word. Took me months together to do an imitation of a body language. Took six months for me to answer a question. Uh, what did you have for lunch? Because for them, abstract thinking is also difficult because everything should be like a visual image for them. There is no prompt for them, they would not answer that. So it's not like they cannot develop that skill, but it has to be facilitated, it has to be practiced for a very long time. So, so there is a variation in the language development which is mentioned here as slow, like no, uh, no language. Or they have understanding using uh, spoken words. Now, let me give you an example for using spoken words. They do not understand a hidden language. Like if you use an NBPDM, they will take the literal meaning of it. You, you uh, use a body language and you try to explain them something uh, connecting to words. They will not be able to understand humor or surpassing. So it's very difficult for them to understand, observe a human and uh, Communicate. Uh, gestures is also one area that children find it very difficult because they avoid eye contact as to call. They they don't look at you. They they have uh, they cannot imitate our emotions also. So it will be mostly you will see behaviors in uh, children with autism, and that's a form of communication as educated people. Any behavior should not be ignored. There's something the child is trying to convey a message there for us because he's not able to express it clearly to us. Uh, the skills affected is already discussed, like the uh, language difficulties, socializations, and uh, academic areas. You now there's a lot of struggle in the academic areas in school, reading, writing, following instructions in a class, in a group. They may they may perform very well in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching, but they will find it very difficult to follow our instructions in a group. So that's very challenging for a child. So smaller group works better for them than a larger group. Uh, when schooling is affected, even employment will be affected, and then finally your life skills, survival, living independently in a society is, is, is a major goal for many of the parents. So that's 
one thing I feel like it's, it's not so evident in all of the kids, but it's still there. Uh, sharing their interest can be a toy to something what they, they like to speak. Now sharing their interest is they will not be able to make friends if they don't have anything to talk, a common interest. And one thing is very evident in children person, they insist on what they want to do. They will never think that uh, the other perspective, feeling of the other person, they want to do it repeatedly, the same thing, and they will do it. Uh, it, it can be seen in behavior, it doesn't happen. And uh, all these are something which I have already explained. So, so uh, the needs of a child while growing would be like play skills, conversation skills, emotional skills, and uh, also problem solving skills. The, if all these are achieved, I think the child grows up uh, with a good mental health and the quality of the life improves for this child. So this is something a need which we don't get in a regular school. Uh, these can be done, but it has to be facilitated by an adult or a buddy, a peer bent buddy. It needs, it needs a lot of training and awareness for this part to be included in a school. I do work in a school, we do a lot of social inclusion. It's, uh, it's facilitated, all of these inclusions is facilitated. It's not gone to a state where it is being independent. So they need an adult support to make a friend as well. I'll give you an example for a conflict. This is the same high functioning child with an autism. Uh, I, he, he had an issue with his peer. He was not able to connect with his peer what exactly is the problem. So he, he find it very difficult to understand the person's communication and like resolve the problem. What should I do now? This, this boy is uh, repeatedly saying this. He's irritating me. He was, he was going on saying the same thing on uh, regularly. So, he didn't know how to avoid situations. So it, it actually frustrated him. So he, he's, a, he's the same kid who's very high achiever in the class. But he couldn't handle a peer who's, who's giving him a challenge in the class. So explicit information did work for him. We have to role model and say, it worked like a spider web diagram we did, but many solutions. Like a visual image has to be given to this child. So that worked out for him. He started using that technique to solve problems with his peers. So, now, uh, the reason why children don't have uh, social skills or communication, uh, it's believed to be uh, mind blindness, a theory of mind, which uh, the inability to understand others' feelings, beliefs, intentions, desires. When this happens, I think they, do, they will not be able to understand uh, or socialize or communicate with people in an appropriate way. Uh, this, is, this is not curable as of now because we didn't find the cause of it. But like autism is like a puzzle, right? So it has to be fixed. It has to be fixed in different areas one by one. So it can't be done with one solution, but it has, it has to be tailor made for each individual in this different. What parents the initially faces, they will you know, just go behind their knees, they discuss, they will not think of their child's need. They will just go ahead and follow blindly what other person did and what was successful for them. But it differs from him to me. Early detection is the best and that's something uh, which can make them near normal. Uh, behavior therapies like um, ADA, there are many therapies that are involved, but it's not yet uh, fully functional here in India, I would say. There are these specialists who work, but it's not available to the common people. And it's very, um, it, very costly, expensive. A, a normal person cannot afford these kind of therapies. So cost factor involves in these therapies. The only thing which can help a child in the initial stages is knowing about autism, understanding what is the needs of your child, and planning your programs and interventions based on them with the professional support, with medical professionals and professional people involved in it. It's a, it's a teamwork. It's not one person can fix it, but it has to be done in a more structured and uh, systematic way. Now, uh,
Being a teacher, I feel like teachers also need to change the way to teach children with autism because um, we are very talented, for sure. Uh, they are very, uh, the intelligence is very average and above average. Uh, so they, they, they can do things which uh, other kids can do, but the way we teach matters. So teacher training and peer training. We also use peers to assist, assist them during the classes, like prompting them and uh, asking them to, uh, asking questions. It can be academic and also social uh, situations. So those things has to be uh, improved in school system. Um, then again, coming to the um, community, uh, the common people, awareness about autism is, uh, is very less. They look at, they look at a child uh, very differently, which, uh, which in turn uh, affects the parents and the family. Uh, I would like to conclude with uh, what are my suggestions, what, what can be solutions with uh, for independent living uh, technology. Because we have seen children work with technology very well than humans. I have, uh, there's something called, uh, like when a child is having a communication issue, we usually don't work on the academics. The first part would be addressing the communication in the classroom. So, we would use AAC, that's called Alternative Augmentative Communication, like a pet class. Pet is an example for AAC, where a picture exchange would be given. Because the, the children with autism are good with visuals. So they are visual thinkers. So they're very good when you give a visual support or a visual aid. So communicating with pictures can be done. Some of the kids do use iPad, application apps for communication. And also, we have uh, I have been using a GPS watch for my son to track him and be independent. So that, that gives me a comfort that I know where he is and I can track him. And then like uh, we have, uh, I recently known about this device, but I have need to explore more. This is called a connector belt, which is not available in India, uh, but it's connected between the body, uh, parent and the child has to wear it. I think kind of prompts the child for the communication. Very unknown area, just now I got to know about this, but it has to be explored. A lot of devices are there, but we are not aware of them. And uh, support living like uh, foster parents, uh, NGOs are there, but uh, I'm not sure about the effectiveness, how effective. We have not seen any examples of successful adults living in the community. Accessible, accessible homes are one areas we can work on where the devices and the setup of the home can be based on the needs of the child. The sensory, the environment plays a very important role for autism. So the sensory uh, needs has to be considered a very calm and quiet place. Uh, so it's very uh, tailored for each child. So that, that can be one way we can you know, develop independence. Then providing uh, uh, reasonable accommodations in uh, in uh, schools, accommodations in the sense, a uh, child who talks a lot but finds it difficult to write, he can express very well, like a child with a high function, but writing is a difficult So in that case, you can use a, a, a speech to text. It's a, it's a assistive device. So we, we, are, we are still exploring on those areas. We are just finding ways. Then I also read about artificial intelligence. I'm not sure how it operates, but there's something called neural network. They are working. It's similar to a brain uh, neural system. So I'm, uh, this also can be one possible way of people uh, with autism can be independent. And working on the rights, yeah, the rights of the person has to be uh, broadened and it has to have a lot of accommodations. Uh, till 2016, uh, autism was not identified as a disability. All the parents have to take a, um, a disability card saying that it has to, uh, you take a card with uh, intellectual disability. So parents do a compromise. I would advise don't go with a compromise. Now that will be a problem for you in the future for your child. And then uh, the last would be job opportunities. I have uh, seen certain cities who have been very inclusive in the job employment areas. I can give you examples of SAP labs where they have um, 
they have taken around 10 individuals who had uh, with autism, but they were trained on iPad and uh, software. They were used for software testing because children with autism have a very good memory and uh, photographic image. So they can easily find the finest details in an error. So that was their strength. So these were used, these children, were, these uh, adults were used only for testing. And the feedback from the managers were really like a heart because they found them very sincere, um, very hardworking, will finish their job on time, no distractions, no breaks. So some of them did not make it because of the sensory. Uh, one one adult had a sensitivity smell. So the whole uh, camp, the whole uh, 5,000 employees uh, were uh, they did a desensitization on these 10 adults. I think that awareness made a difference. And there, there were a few of them who were successful. But this is just a trial and error. I think we have a lot of opportunities if we try. Thank you. Uh, I want to emphasize on parents who's, uh, who has missed that early milestones. It's never too late to expand the ability of a child. You always have a scope for improvement. So believe on that. So I miss the early stages, that's fine, but I'm seeing a lot of improvement if you work consistently with a child. It's the, it, the only thing is, they learn only through practice, not through observation. That's one thing I've seen in almost most of the kids. We are all different. And that's wonderful. Some differences are easy to see. I hairstyle, eye color, and so on. Other differences can't be seen. Our favorite foods, fear, or special skills. Interestingly, the way we see the world is also different. For instance, what do you see in this drawing? Most people see a man, but some people might have seen a man. Whichever you saw, you are correct. This is just a trick drawing to show you that all brains work differently. The brain is your body's computer. It works differently from all of us and controls how you learn. That's why we are all good at different things. How you feel, which is why we all feel different emotions. And how you communicate. Sometimes the brain is connected in such a way it affects senses and how we perceive and read situations and interactions. This is known as autism. So it's likely you already know someone who is autistic. And for this reason, it's useful to know a little bit about autism. The special wiring inside an autistic brain can sometimes make the person good at tasks we may find difficult, such as mathematics, drawing, or music. It can also do the opposite, and activities we find too easy are incredibly difficult to learn, such as making friends. The senses constantly send information to your brain about your surroundings and other people. However, when a person's brain and its senses don't communicate well, the brain can become overwhelmed and confused, affecting how they see the world. Picture yourself walking down the street. This is how an autistic brain may experience the same world. Scary, isn't it? Sadly, in many cases, the person can't say out loud how they feel. So even though there's chaos going on in their heads, they seem okay on the outside, unable to ask for help. We all develop behaviors to help us feel calm in uncomfortable situations. We may overweight, hug ourselves, chew our fingernails, fish, bite our lips, and so on. Equally, autistic people develop behaviors that help them cope with these intense moments. These actions may seem unusual, but they're just their way to feel calm. When they happen, it means they're having a hard time. 
The kind thing to do is not to give them an even harder time by getting cross, ignoring them, all the while. Remember, just because a PlayStation can't read an Xbox game, it doesn't mean it's broken. People with autism need friends who are willing to take the time to meet. With good communication and plenty of patience, everyone would be better off. People with autism are not ill or broken. They simply have a unique view of the world. And with a little support from their friends, they might just be able to share their view with us. Autism can make amazing things happen.